Welcome to the introduction to polynomials. In this video, we're going to talk about what makes an equation or some expression a polynomial, as well as classifying polynomials, learning their degree, leading coefficient, number of terms, how to name them. And then finally, we'll be sure we know how to write a polynomial in standard form. First of all, what is a polynomial? If we take a look at this example here, we see that we have 3x squared plus 5. 3x squared plus 5. This is an example of a polynomial. And while we'll get to the definition in just a moment, we can see that this polynomial is broken down here and color coded. There's two terms. The first term is 3x squared. The second term is 5. Terms are separated by plus or minus signs. This polynomial has two terms, so it more specifically is called a binomial. Then we can see that the number parts of each term, well, this three right here rather is called a coefficient. This three is a coefficient because it's in front of the variable. Then the five doesn't have a variable with it, and so we just call that number a constant. So the numbers are either coefficients or constants, coefficients in front of a variable, constants on their own. Next, we have the actual variable. Most of the time when we're dealing with polynomials, we'll be using x. Then finally, we have the power or the exponent. The degree of this polynomial right here is 2 because that's the biggest exponent. So a polynomial is just terms. Terms are separated by a plus or minus sign. Now, those terms need to have, the variables need to have positive exponents, or the terms can just be a number. So an example of a polynomial like we just saw is 3x squared plus 5. This is a polynomial with two terms. We could also have a polynomial with only one term called a monomial. That could simply be, let's say, negative 1.7x to the fourth. Note that our exponents here are positive whole number values, positive whole number values. And the terms can also just be a constant. Next, let's do another example of a polynomial. Let's say we have 4x squared plus x minus 3. That's also a polynomial. It has three terms. And the variable terms have positive whole number. Whole numbers are positive or 0. But it has those positive whole number exponents there or just a constant term. What would make something not a polynomial? Well, polynomials have to have those positive exponents. So let's say we had 3x to the negative second plus 5. This is not a polynomial because the exponent is negative. We could also have written this as like 3 over x squared. 3 to the negative x squared means that x squared is in the denominator, rules of exponents. And then lastly, something that's not a polynomial is if we had maybe like a fraction exponent, such as 3, I keep using the number 3, we can use any number here, we'll use 7x to the 1 half. That would not be a polynomial, or the 1 half power means a root, so 7 square root of x. That would also not be a polynomial because our exponent there of the variable is not that nice positive whole number value. Some characteristics of polynomials are its degree and its leading coefficient. Here I have three polynomials. Our first one is negative 3x squared plus 5x plus 11. The degree of a polynomial is its largest exponent. The largest exponent here is 2. The degree of this polynomial is 2. In our next example here, we have 2x minus 1. So we'll do all the degrees first. 2x minus 1. Do you see an exponent here? While we don't see it, we know that there is a silent little 1 up there. So it's really 2x to the first minus 1. So our degree here, our largest exponent, is 1. In our last example, we can see that this polynomial has four terms x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 31. The degree is the largest exponent, and here we can see that our degree is 3.
Now we're going to talk about the next characteristic of polynomials, which is the lead or leading coefficient. Leading means it's leading the way. And remember that coefficients are those numbers right in front of the variable. We can see here that all of these polynomials are actually written in standard form. That means that they're in order. They're in descending order. So that biggest exponent always went first, and then we walk down the line with exponents. So in the first example here, the term with the, the greatest exponent was first. Then the next exponent came in the next term, which was one. So we had an exponent of two, then an exponent of one, and then the constant term. That's in standard form. Because it's in standard form in that order, we can literally look at the lead and see what that leading coefficient is. It leads the way. Our leading coefficient here is negative three. It's that number out front that leads. Next, our next example, 2x minus 1. We can see that we, again, are in standard form because we're in descending order of exponent there, which is the number term last, that constant term. And we can see our leading coefficient here is 2, the number out front. Lastly, our cubic polynomial down here, cubic because it's degree 3, we can see that we are again in standard form. Our exponents go in descending order, 3, 2, 1, and then the constant term is last. Our lead coefficient is the number leading the way in front of x cubed. What number is there? There's really a 1 out in front of this x cubed term. We just don't write it. So that's our leading coefficient. Now let's name polynomials. I have the three of the same polynomials we just looked at, and then I added a fourth one here. In order to name a polynomial, we normally can look at both the degree and the number of terms, but I'm going to simplify this and we'll just look at how many terms there are. In general, the term polynomial, poly means many. And nomial means number or terms in the math sense, or rather nomial's name or terms. So a polynomial is just one that has a number of terms, some finite number of terms, but we can classify them more specifically. So let's take a look at our first polynomial. How many terms are in this first polynomial here? Remember that terms are separated by plus or minus signs. We can see that in our first example, we have three terms, negative 3x squared, positive 5x, and positive 11. So we have three terms. We use the word trinomial to describe this particular type of polynomial with three terms, tri for three. In our next example, how many terms are in this polynomial, 2x minus 1? We can see that we have two terms here, 2x and a minus 1. There are two terms. In our language here in English, we use the term bi or binomial to describe a polynomial with two terms. So a binomial has two terms specifically. Mind you, these are all polynomials. These are just more specific names we can use. Our next polynomial has four terms. One, two, three, and 31 here at the end, that constant term. As we hit four terms or a higher number of terms, we actually don't have any specific names for that. Instead, we just call it a general polynomial. You could say a four-termed polynomial, but in general, if you have four or more terms, it's just a many-termed thing, so polynomial. And lastly, that bottom polynomial, 8x squared, has only one term. I forgot to write how many terms we had up here. We had four terms. So lastly here, we use the prefix mono. We use the prefix mono for this one and call it a monomial. 
All right, having a bit of trouble with the text tool. There we go. M O N O M I A L, monomial. So when we have one term, it's a monomial specifically. Two termed polynomials are called binomials. Three termed polynomials are called trinomials, like a tricycle, and two is like a bicycle. And then finally, if we have four or more terms, it's just a generic polynomial. Lastly, we want to be sure we know how to write polynomials in standard form. Standard form means that we're going in descending order down, and we've combined any like terms possible. Let's see what this means in number one. Do I have any terms that can be combined in number one? I have the f of x equals, then I have our constant term, my quadratic or squared term, my linear or just x term, and then our cubic or to the third power term. None of these terms of the four are like terms, so I can't combine any. Recall that like terms have to have the exact same variable and exponent or have to both be just plain numbers. So we can't combine anything. However, we can write it in descending order, meaning my term with the largest exponent needs to be written first. The term with the largest exponent in it is that negative 8x cubed. Okay, so we got that one. Our next term going in descending order is the term that has a squared for the exponent, a 2. So that term is minus x squared. Okay, our next term is going to have a 1 for the exponent or just be an x. That term is the 5x term, and that's a positive term plus 5x. And then lastly, our constant term goes last. That's a positive 4. Be careful that you don't write a minus 4, even though you see a minus sign right there. Recall that we look in front of the term to determine its sign. So we don't see anything there. And remember, we assume positivity when we don't see anything. So now our function's in standard form. Rather, it's a polynomial. It's both a polynomial and a function. Okay, our next example is only a binomial, so there's less work here. And even though I don't have y equals or f of, x, f of x equals, it's still a polynomial. We are going to write the term with the highest exponent first and the constant term goes last if there is one. So this is x to the first. It's actually a negative x to the first. And then that eight goes second and it's a positive eight. And lastly, in number three, We again have a four-termed polynomial, but wait, do we actually? We can see that we have some like terms here that can be combined. Notice here that the first term, 7x squared, and the second term, negative 3x squared, can actually be combined because they are like terms. We don't have any other terms that are like. So I can combine, I have 7x squared, and I subtract 3x squared, I now have 4x squared. I'm going to bring down the other terms that we didn't do anything with those. All right, now we can write it in standard form by putting it in descending order, just like we've been doing. So now this polynomial actually has, it's actually a three-termed polynomial because we had to combine those two like terms. All right, so our first term our highest exponent is 3, so that term comes first. Our next highest exponent is the term that's 4x squared. And then finally, our last term is just the constant term. Note that polynomials don't have to go always like completely in order and hit every single term. Like in this orange example here in number 3, we had a third power term, a second power term, but we didn't have a first power term. There's no term with just x, and that's okay. We still wrote it in standard form, going in descending order, and making sure that all like terms are combined if possible. All right, that is our intro to polynomials, and hopefully you got something out of this video.